Styles hosting this episode of Mind Your Own Business, literally. I hope you're having a good week. I thought I would start off, you know, these um, this season, I'm kind of going off the cuff. It's not super formal. I'm just sharing what's on my mind at the moment that I think will help you. And I haven't had that great of a week. Uh, and uh, it makes me uh, remember, it reminds me that, you know, people listening to this, you might not be having that great of a week. And I, re I remind myself of that uh, scripture in the good book that says, hey, be happy, glory in your tribulations. <laughs> oh, whoa, it's hard. Great. Let me be thankful for that. But the reason is now a lot of people say, be happy in your tribulations because it brings patience. But that is only the first thing. It's not just patience. Be happy in your, be glorying in the tribulations because they bring patience and patience gives you experience and experience gives you hope. And the final result of that is having the hope. And we all need that because we're constantly going to be going through challenging times. So if you are also going through a hard time, whether it's business, personal, extended family, your work, your career, holidays, your clothes, <laughs> whatever your challenge is, know, and if you can attack them and approach them like, okay, I'm glad I'm having this challenge because I know this is going to prov provide me some patience and an experience that will result in me being able to tap in hope. And you need hope. You need hope to have faith that your life is going to work out how you intend. And so you, you need the hope to reach your goals. Woo. Well, I hope that encourages you. I feel pretty fired up myself. And today, uh, so I'm going to talk about building your brand. And when I looked at this topic again, before I was going to talk about it right now, I just shake my head. How can I tackle this topic in 10 minutes? I can't. But what I can do is just tell you one thing, maybe two, but I could tell you one thing that will help you. And when we talk about building a brand, whether it's a brand in the job that you have and you want to build your brand, whether it's the career and business that you're building, a brand in your family, in your neighborhood, this will help you build your brand. In my opinion, this is probably one of the elements that has the highest need for you to hire help. <laughs> you will you will be thankful if you get somebody to help you when you're tackling your brand. And the reason for this is uh, because it's almost impossible for us to see our own brand. Sometimes we don't think that highly of ourselves. And so we don't have that much good stuff to say. Sometimes we're too humble. We're not used to boasting. Sometimes we're super egocentric and we think we're awesome. But really, when it comes to defining our brand, we don't have the words. And it's uh, there's a saying that says it's hard to see the label when you're inside the jar. So you are a product or you sell a product, you're inside the jar. The brand is what the other people see. So actually, you already have a brand. Yeah, it's what everybody in your family and your friends knows about you. It's how they think about you. You can and you can affect that, which you want to do if you're wanting to build a brand for your business and for your life. And this begins by starting to define yourself. Um, and in relation to what you want other people to see and know about you so that you can help them defining yourself, your values. Um, if the business is you, that it is about you. But even if your business is a product, it's defining the values for your product. In the real estate industry, there is um, a key concept that is called the highest and best use. And this is how we determine value of a property. So if you have a residential house that is zoned for uh, multifamily use, and it's only housing one family at the time, and it's just a small house on a big lot, then we would say that's not the highest and best use 
for this property. You can have multifamily, that there should be a huge building with many floors. So if you only have a house, that's not using the highest and best use. If you think of this for yourself, think in terms of what is your highest and best use. And often we're not tapping quite into that. If you're zoned for whatever, decide what you're zoned for, then you want to reach the edge of that capacity, you know, and go full throttle. If you're zoned multifamily, high density, you want to build that building as tall as it can be, right within the guidelines and houses as many people as you can. So understanding what your highest and best use is can really give you some insight to help define your brand. I also really enjoy some of the personality or character tests. I favor, um, you know, the father of medicine, Hippocrates. He's the one who first defined the four character traits, choleric, sanguine, melancholy, and phlegmatic. The DISC um, test has outlined that nicely in everyday language. Um, so take a DISC test. Myers-Briggs does a good um a good evaluation, I think, of helping us to discover ourselves. Um, I've also just here in Calgary, Alberta, a couple of years ago found, I think it's called Big Bam Archetypes. And if you just Google that, and I mean, I don't know when you're going to be listening to this. Are they still in business? I hope so. But there's an archetype quiz that I found particularly helpful, and that kind of outlines you know, the brand you want people to see. Is it sage wisdom? Is it a jester? Is it a rebel? Are you a, a hero? You know, as most of us in sales feel we are. So um, find out your archetype, find out your personality, and then find your words. Words are very helpful to share on social media, on your website, on your business cards, maybe. What are the words that define you? And, you, and these might come from all of this research you're doing. And if you can define it down to three words that are your authentic self and match the needs of the people you're serving. Uh, so when I did a big values test, of course I have seven main values for myself that I um, keep track of. And sometimes I look at them again to remind myself, hey, what are my values? But for sure the top three are results. That's number one. Um, and wisdom. I always want to have wisdom and use hindsight and take action and passion. I mean, if anyone's passionate about what they do, you can't stop me from doing what I do. So uh, just knowing these helps you to define it and you can start telling people stories uh, or lessons around these words. And then that uh, exposes itself in color and a style um, and your logo, but not just your logo, but the whole personality of your website, your brochures, uh, you know, everything that you use to show yourself. I know I was really tickled a number of years ago when I was able to buy the car I wanted. And, you know, up until that point of paying attention so much to my brand, I could care less what kind of car I'm driving. I just want a car that's paid for. <laughs> that's, you know, when I was a mom with four kids, I just wanted a minivan that was paid for. But when I picked a car that I felt really resonated with me and matched my brand, I was able to get a candy apple red Mercedes. And I, I love it every time I see it. So, you know, it's just an extension, um, an extension of who I am, and it can be an extension of who you are. And then once you start, because you have to start somewhere, but once you start, it will be a continuous iteration. It's never done. You're always defining, making it better. And, you know, if we look at some of the big brands, what happens is um, people begin to resonate with your brand, with the business that you have. If we think of, I mean, it's very easy to think of Coke or Pepsi. So I'm a Coke girl and my husband's a Pepsi guy, obviously, uh, opposites attract, um, but they, they, you know, we belong. We feel like we belong to those brands. The good brands make you feel an affinity towards them. And alternatively, on the opposite side, I just now I love this mortgage broker. She is wonderful. She helps my clients. So I'm, I'm not saying anything negative about her, but it's funny 
because for her first time, she's looking at doing a jingle for her business. And so she sent me this jingle and now she is, she is a good, wholesome, a mom, country girl. Um, you know, she's down to earth. She's very client focused. And um, the jingle that she picked is like this high energy um, urban rap. You know, she's got a rapper singing her jingle. And I just had quite a laugh and said, oh my goodness, I didn't know you were into this. Like, I didn't know this was part of your brand. Look at you. And and she laughed and said, no, no, I just really liked the sound of it, but that doesn't really represent me. So now I don't know if she's using it on her website, but you know, as we start venturing out to find things that fit us, it is important. So just because you like something or you like to enjoy something doesn't mean uh, that sharing that helps other people to you know put you in that label doesn't help other people to define you and you do want people to define you and know who you are and what you do so last year i did hire an award-winning um, marketing company and because i had taken my brand to what i felt was the highest i could i couldn't imagine anything better i had my logos I had my colors and honestly, I could not imagine anyone could make them any better. I was quite happy with them, but because I was transitioning more from coaching entrepreneurs into doing real estate um, transactions, selling, buying houses, I wanted to change it a bit and I couldn't be more pleased and surprised with how much just from them looking at me from their, their outside perspective, I thought they did a magnificent job in even leveling up my logo and brand even better. They did a great job with my website. So I would really encourage, you know, get help with that. And then, you know, there is a way to become irresistible, I believe, and am I'm always trying to pursue it myself. And, but if you're starting a new career, if you're starting a new business, it's very easy to feel insignificant, invisible, nobody knows you, nobody knows you're in this business. In real estate, we've had a huge boom. There's There used to be about 5,000 realtors in Calgary. Over the last two years, it's grown to like 7,500 realtors. So, you know, big boom in the industry. How on earth am I ever going to stand out amongst the thousands? And you might feel like that in your industry too. But let me quote a well-known philosopher, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> who said, why would you try to fit in when you're born to stand out? He said, today you are you. That is truer than true. There's no one alive who is youer than you. And that, my friends, is definitely a key to being on brand and becoming irresistible. It's, it's the things you do in your own special way. It's how you talk. It's what you talk about. It's putting on your splash of your own special sauce so that people feel like they're having a good, authentic connection when they're with you. And being you, being authentic, it deletes your competition. It gets rid of your competition. You're the only one who does it like you do it. Nobody does it better than you because it reminds me of that song. Nobody does it better. Makes you feel numb. Da, da, da. That's how real people sing songs. I don't remember all the words, but nobody does it quite the way you do. Baby, you're the best. You're the best. Nobody does it better. And it's just by being you. So a few years ago, my husband and I were doing errands and he had this white pickup truck. And so we go into this little plaza area, I had to go into the corner store and he waited in the truck for me. So when I came out, I went to get in the truck, but the door was locked and I, <laughs> I got a little irritated, you know, boys, you think you're so funny locking me out. So I wasn't amused. And I looked inside the truck to give my husband a dirty look, but my husband wasn't there. So then I was confused. Where, where did he go? It was a plaza with like five parking stalls. You know, there's nowhere else to go. And I was in the store and I didn't see him anywhere. So I'm looking around. 
And as I'm looking around with my hand on the door, trying to get in this white pickup truck, I notice a few stalls down, my husband is looking at me, <laughs> laughing his head off because he can see I'm trying to get into someone else's pickup truck. Yeah, this is a true story. You, you can't make this kind of stuff up. Um, so obviously I left that truck alone. Good thing they locked their door. But when, when I was a little kid, my grandparents, on the top of their car, they had an antenna. And on the antenna, they had this cactus, this funny little rubber cactus. And you've seen them around, people who put stuff on their antennas, a basketball or whatnot. And uh, so when we used to go somewhere, we didn't look for their green Ford station wagon. We just looked for the antenna with a cactus on it. And here's the thing, you know, there are a million white Ford pickup trucks. And I, I was just looking for a white truck. And so I could have gotten any white truck. But when you are your business and there's thousands of other people like you, you want to be the one that has your antenna up and you have your little bobble on the top of that antenna. So who are you? And so when people are looking for your service, they're not just looking for, you know, let's say a realtor. They're looking for the one who has a cactus on the top of their antenna. You hear what I'm saying? It's all about being you, being that one special you in the sea of sameness and, uh, you know, and providing that service that you have for your clients. So I hope you can see a few little ideas of what you could do that will honestly help you on the journey with finding your brand. Investigate yourself, define uh, what your values are, find your words um, discover how you want to tell people how you help them, you know, and what you want. So just, just do some research. I will encourage you do some research on yourself, get to know yourself better. And then I honestly, on this one, I would advise to hire professional help on getting some, um, marketing and feedback on your brand, creating your brand assets and your marketing collateral. Listen, you'll be glad you did. Okay, so that's my little two cents for now. I hope you uh, got something out of that. And do your homework, for goodness sake. There's where the value is. And join me next time on my next episode. I have a little something special I am going to share with you that I think is going to change the way you look at doing business and life and living your life. And I'm calling it the Midas Touch. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me today. Take care. Buy with style, sell with suit, it's your move.